Hey y'all, welcome back to the Browse Bunch, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Courtney, and it is Friday, so that means it's time for another What's for Dinner video. I post these every single week here on my channel, so if you enjoy What's for Dinner videos or grocery hauls or other things like that, then make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I would love to have you be a part of my YouTube family, but we will be sharing four of the meals that our family had this week, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments down below which one would be your favorite. I would love to hear it and it really helps out my channel so I appreciate you guys so much but without further ado let's get on into the video for this first meal that we're going to be making this week I made a french onion burger casserole or at least that's what we're going to call it it's a little bit of a play off of the burgers that we had last week in our what's for dinner video I just thought I would like to try to recreate it into a casserole form because I liked I guess the meat chopped up more than I do like in burger form I mentioned that I've never been crazy about burgers so I really thought that I would like it this way and so for this recipe you will need an onion Lipton soup mix packet um, some garlic powder Worcestershire sauce I'm sure I'm not saying that right, but whatever. Um, some salt and pepper I used, and then you'll need two um, cans of crescent dough rolls, or you can use the crescent dough sheets. Those work a lot better, but our store didn't have any, so I'm just gonna use the crescent rolls and just pinch the little pieces together so that they're, there's not any like holes. And then I also chopped up a whole onion, and we'll just use some butter and a little bit of sugar to caramelize those. And then I'll also use some provolone cheese slices and then of course one pound of ground beef. The first thing I did was just unroll one pack of the crescent dough rolls. I actually left the other pack in the fridge so that it wouldn't get soft while I was doing this one. I just unrolled it and went ahead and put it in the bottom of the pan, pinched all of the little pieces together so there's no holes and I actually stuck that in the oven for about five minutes while I was cooking up the meat and the onions just to get that a little bit solid before putting in the meat, but that's optional. You can just do it all together if you want. For the temp of the oven, I just actually used the temp that the package of the crescent dough rolls said. And when I go to cook it, that's how long I will cook it as well. But for the meat, I'm just mixing together the onion soup mix with the Worcestershire sauce and salt and pepper and garlic powder. Once the meat is cooked and you just drain out any of the excess grease, we just placed it into the pan and spread it out. And then on top of that, we add in the caramelized onions and spread those out as well. One thing that I would have added and we did when we were actually eating them is sweet pickles. I had all intentions of adding them when we were cooking this, but we just forgot. We were really distracted. And then also we used provolone slices. But if I make this again, which I probably will because we loved it, um, I'll probably use provolone cheese just shredded because this made it like pretty stringy and thick for the cheese. But I think the um, shredded would have been perfect. Lastly, you just want to unroll that dough sheet and spread it on top and pinch together the pieces. Or if you're using a dough sheet, just spread it on top and then stick it in the oven for however long your package says. To go along with this meal as a side, I just made some of this Mexican style street corn that you can just whip up really quick in the microwave. This corn I thought was pretty decent, but my husband doesn't like cilantro, so he was not a fan. And then Grant also spit it out, so I guess he doesn't like cilantro either. This was so good, y'all. Um, I'm so glad that we tried to recreate those burgers because it really paid off. And again, I would definitely add some pickles. We used the bread and butter pickles, but it just made it so yummy. On this night, we were supposed to originally be having a pork loin, but Walmart was out of it and they didn't get it in my Walmart grocery pickup order. So we're just having breakfast for supper, which is always a win in our house. I'm just going to be using this Bisquick um, pancake mix that already, ha 
already has chocolate chips in it and this blueberry syrup is so good. I highly recommend it. It's probably a little more thin than you would get at like IHOP, but it was still really tasty. And then we're also going to be having some bacon. We've been cooking this in the oven, which we absolutely love doing. Um, it is just so much cleaner and you don't get popped with grease. You just stick it in there and don't have to worry about it. Cook it for like 25 minutes and it's done. After mixing together the pancakes, I decided to add a little bit of vanilla. I had seen somebody doing this. I can't remember who, but it made it really yummy, and I'll definitely be doing that from now on. And then here in just a second, you'll see the bacon. It does have a ton of grease on it when it comes out of the oven, but we just dabbed it with some paper towels, and I totally think it's still worth doing in the oven. So I ended up just going ahead and breaking up the pancakes and pouring on the blueberry syrup. We just served it with some bacon and strawberries on the side. I would love to hear what y'all's favorite breakfast for supper meal is. We love breakfast around here. Tonight for supper, I'm gonna be making some spaghetti squash Alfredo. Um, so first I'm just gonna preheat the oven to 400 and have that going. But one of you guys mentioned to make it easier to actually cut the spaghetti squash in half to poke some holes in it or slice it with a knife and put it in the microwave for a few minutes and then it'll be easier to cut. So I'm gonna try that out and I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then after this is almost um, done cooking in the oven, we'll work on our Alfredo sauce. When you're cooking it in the oven you want to poke some holes in it anyway around the side so i think this is fine just doing this like this just randomly throughout i haven't made a spaghetti squash in a while and i'm excited because it is one of my favorites with the alfredo anyway i think it tastes really good and the kids even like it so a healthier alternative they're pretty picky so any way that i can get like that kind of healthiness in there sneaking in there is a win for me. So if you have any like of your favorite ways of sneaking veggies into foods for your kids, let me know in the comments down below because I could really use some tips. I'm just gonna stick it in there for a few minutes. Okay, so this is what it looks like after four minutes in the microwave. The only spot that looks soft is right here that was on the bottom. The other side didn't look soft. So I'm gonna try to cut it on this side and see. And if it's still really hard to cut, I might just put it in there for a couple more minutes. It's definitely easier, but still semi-difficult. So maybe next time I'll flip it halfway through. But now I'm just going to take out all the seeds and then sprinkle some olive oil on it and put it on the pan face down and then cook it for like 45 minutes. I feel like I'm coring a pumpkin. I need one of those little tools that you get at Halloween. <laughs> I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of the olive oil and then spread it around with my little brush thing, whatever it's called. Ooh, that was a lot. Okay, new plan. <laughs> I'm just gonna start out cooking it for 45 minutes and then if it needs a little bit longer, we'll just cook it a little longer. Okay, for the Alfredo sauce that I'm gonna be making, I'm gonna use um, a stick of butter. I've got like one and a half cups of Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna use like that much of the cream cheese that I've got cut off there. A cup of heavy whipping cream. I've got two cloves of garlic here that I just chopped up really quick. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of mozzarella 
at the end on top. I also forgot to mention that I'm gonna use some salt and pepper, but first I'm just gonna let this um, butter melt down before adding in all the other ingredients. Okay, now I'm gonna add in my heavy cream, one cup of that, my garlic, A little bit of the cream cheese, if I can grab it. And then like half a teaspoon of pepper, about a half. And then one fourth a teaspoon of salt. And just bring that to a simmer. And once it's um, been simmering for a couple minutes, I'll take it off and then add in the Parmesan cheese. Now that it's simmering, I'm gonna turn off the heat and add in my Parmesan cheese. And then just like, I'm gonna use a whisk actually instead. And then just use whisk that around until it gets to the consistency you want and when the Parmesan cheese is all melted. Perfect. But I also have a smaller spaghetti squash, so maybe that's why. I don't know. Oh, look at that. It always excites me to see how easy it comes out like that. It's neat. I'm just sprinkling it with a little bit of par uh, not parmesan, mozzarella cheese on top. But here it is. And I've already tasted the Alfredo sauce and it is probably the best batch of Alfredo sauce that I've made yet. It is so good. And we're just having it with a slice of garlic toast that I made in the toaster oven. But I'm excited to eat. This is one of my favorite meals. This is proof that Porter likes it. <laughs> is that good? This is definitely a favorite. A family favorite meal. We all enjoy it, don't we, Grant? Yum. What this did you one, say? This one, I will really watch like them. Uh -huh. So make them next time. You want me to make it next time? Yeah. <laughs> it's good, huh? Y'all, this is quite bizarre. <laughs> Both of them are pretty picky, and we have like they always at least try it usually, but they never usually eat it all. So this is pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm sure it's just the sauce and not the spaghetti squash noodles, but I'll take it. Tonight I'm gonna to be making some barbecue bacon pineapple chicken. That's a lot to say in one mouthful. You'll just need some chicken breast, how many ever you'll need for your family. I'm just using two, they're pretty large, so I'm gonna cut them in half to make four. And because the kids don't usually eat much of it and we'll have some sides with it too. And then one cup of mozzarella cheese red onion we don't use the whole thing but about a fourth of it probably and i already had half of one still left in the fridge some green onions to top it with that's optional but we like green onions so i'm going to use those some pineapple um i'm just using the pineapple slices and i'm going to cut them into little bits our store only had the chunks or this so that's what i'm going to use um some barbecue sauce to top the chicken with and then this is the kind of bacon I'm gonna use. You can use actual bacon and cook it, but this is much easier and quicker, so I'm just gonna um, cook some of that in the microwave really quick. So first, I'm just going to cut my chicken in half and then chop up my onion while cooking the bacon in the microwave. I'm just gonna cook about six slices, and then once they're done, just crumble them up a little bit into pieces, and we'll just be sprinkling that on top of the chicken. Also, I do have my oven preheated to 375. I always seem to forget to tell you guys that, but it is going to be cooked on 375. I'm actually going to cut some of these into little strips. That's just kind of how we like it.
I'm just gonna take like four slices of it and cut those up and then put the rest in a little dish to keep in the fridge. Now I'm just gonna put my chicken into the pan, a nine by 13 one, and then layer on a good amount of barbecue sauce, and then the pineapple, red onions, and then cheese on top. I'm just using the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, but you can use any kind that you want. Use my little Dollar Tree brush and just kind of brush that all along the chicken. This is one of my favorite things that I've ever bought at the Dollar Tree. If you know of any good kitchen products from the Dollar Tree that I should know about, let me know in the comments down below because I love a good deal and kitchen gadgets are awesome. Now I'm just going to cook it in the oven for like 25 to 30 minutes and then see how it is. And the last like four-ish minutes, you want to broil it. But first I'm going to take it out and check to make sure the temperature is okay because I've been having trouble lately with the timing on some of these recipes not being enough time for our oven. So you always want to make sure that the temp of the chicken is done. And for a side to go with the chicken, I'm just going to make this little steam bag in the microwave of some rice with corn, carrots, and peas in it. Grant loves rice, so I'm hoping he'll still eat it even though it's got a few of those little veggies in there. So after 27 minutes in the oven, it definitely is done. And I don't even think I need to put it on broil, so I'm not going to worry about that. But it is to temp and it looks yummy. I've got a little bit of green onions that I chopped up and I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that on top as well. We just served it with some of that rice that I showed you guys. And I do have to say that it was not good. None of us liked it. It was chewy. It tastes bad. I even added soy sauce, still wasn't good. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.